The story happened at a high class party. As soon as a man walks in, he immediately becomes the focus of everyone. Three wealthy women start to pay attention to him. The man seems to realize this and then smiles and approaches them. He walks up to the mirror and admires his handsome face. This conceited guy is our main character, Lee Young Jun. Young, wealthy, holding billions in assets, perfectly proportioned body, perfect physique. With his handsome face, everyone he meets praises him. Receiving too many compliments from others makes Jun very self-conceited. This surely isn't an ordinary mirror. I feel like my body is emitting a radiant light. At the same time, he asks his secretary, Kim, who is standing beside him, What should I do? I'm too handsome. I'm afraid women around the world won't be able to resist me. Kim, the secretary, is long accustomed to her boss's conceited nature. She continuously flatters and praises him. These compliments boost June's confidence. Up to now, Kim has worked alongside him for nearly nine years. Approaching 30, even her blind date prospects are non-existent. After careful thought, she decides to resign. June is surprised to hear this. He then pretends to be indifferent and agrees. But that night, he can't sleep. The next day, he asks Kim if she's serious about resigning. Kim confirms. June waves his hand indifferently and says, as you wish. But as Kim finishes writing her resignation letter, she looks up to June's angry face and startles. Why does this woman's resignation become a thorn in June's side? He immediately seeks advice from his close friend. The friend tells him that Kim has been working for him for nine years and must be exhausted with the job by now. This seems somewhat reasonable. June knows what he has to do. He finds Kim and promises a promotion, a raise. Moreover, he'll reduce her workload by half, even pay her debts. But still, Kim insists on resigning, no matter what he says. June is angry, he truly doesn't understand what she wants. So, June turns to the director for analysis. Both feel there must be some reason behind Kim's resignation. June recalls the evening of the party. At the party, his rumored girlfriend reminded him it was her birthday. He then asked Kim to buy her a bouquet. After seeing the vice president's rumored girlfriend receive the flowers and start crying, it seems the problem has been resolved. Apparently, she's jealous, she must like me now. But June misinterprets. Because Kim is allergic to pollen, when she smells flowers, she starts sneezing and tearing up. After that, June called Secretary Kim out and gave her a bouquet of flowers. At this point, Secretary Kim couldn't hold back and continuously sniffled, her eyes instantly turning red. June was on the brink of tears but burst into laughter instead. I'll give you a day off to think carefully about resigning. Although Secretary Kim didn't understand anything, but thinking that tomorrow she could sleep in without seeing the vice chairman's face all day. She immediately felt happy, because she had worked for nine years but had never had a full day off. She also said that after resigning, she would seek her own life, not wanting to be tied down anymore. Yet, that night June couldn't sleep. The next day, combing his hair, he found a pimple on his forehead. Damn this woman for making me think to the point of getting pimples. On the other side, Secretary Kim woke up feeling extremely relieved. Then, Miso immediately arranged an interview for a new person so that there would be someone to replace her when she left. Seeing how eager she was to leave, June was furious. But he still wanted to appear fine so he could only tell Secretary Kim to quickly hand over her work to the new person. He reminded Kim Miso to only show the new secretary how to organize her work schedule. So Secretary Kim had to stay and work a few more days. Just as Miso was about to turn around and leave, June immediately asked her why she was resigning. Secretary Kim hesitantly told him, Actually, I'm already 29 years old, it's time to settle down. I feel now is the best time to get married and have children. After hearing this, June was immediately stunned. He thought Secretary Kim was hinting at him. That evening, he arranged to meet Secretary Kim outside to talk, asking her if she really quit because she wanted to get married. Secretary Kim nodded, so June said then she didn't need to resign anymore. I'll marry you, marry me. As a result, Secretary Kim immediately turned her head towards him and sniffed. He asked if he was drunk, why would he say such nonsense? The director burst out laughing after hearing this story. He teased that June was pretending to fail, right? But a self-confident person like June couldn't accept such a result. After a moment of self-analysis, he came up with the answer that, Surely Secretary Kim feels unworthy of me. Oh, how insecure she is. His friend helplessly said perhaps she really didn't want to marry him. June's face immediately darkened. There's no girl in this world who wouldn't want to marry me. But the next day he was faced with the truth. The replacement for Secretary Kim had come to work, Secretary Kim was busy reorganizing and passing everything to the new person, she really wants to resign. This made June extremely uncomfortable. Turning around, June found his four-eyed friend and asked him, 
Why Secretary Kim would treat him like this? Director Park said perhaps your sudden proposal scared her. You need to take it step by step, like acquiring a business. Hearing that, Young Jun suddenly realized, after work, when Secretary Kim and her colleagues went for barbecue. As they were eating, Jun suddenly walked in and expressed his intention to join them. His appearance immediately startled the employees. They suddenly felt the barbecue wasn't tasty anymore. Realizing the atmosphere became tense because of him, Jun raised his glass wanting to drink with everyone, but he found cheap soju difficult to drink. He even blamed them for not knowing how to enjoy. If they tried a bit harder in their work, they could dine at upscale restaurants. Everyone felt extremely resentful but could do nothing but remain silent. Secretary Kim quickly changed the topic, hoping to lighten the mood by playing games. But what kind of game could they play with their boss present? Of course, it's flattering each other, they took turns flattering their boss. Which made Jun extremely pleased. After dinner, colleagues suggested karaoke and of course our protagonist went along. But the cramped space made the CEO uncomfortable. He waved his hand and told Secretary Kim to book a room at a higher-end karaoke place. Then took everyone elsewhere. Under the influence of alcohol, everyone quickly became cheerful, and the atmosphere improved. Seeing Secretary Kim laughing and joking throughout, Jun felt extremely pleased. He asked if she felt very happy because I came here. Secretary Kim just nodded. He handed a piece of tofu to Secretary Kim, making her unable to refuse. She reluctantly accepted it and ate it. As a result, she choked, seeing that Jun immediately handed her a glass of water. This fool gives her alcohol. After the fun ended, Jun took Secretary Kim home. He felt that today's date was very successful. Jun directly said, I want to date you. Secretary Kim was stunned. Seeing this, Jun immediately asked, Are you so overwhelmed that you can't speak the truth? Secretary Kim coldly said, You're not my type. I like considerate men. Saying that, she turned and left. Jun's self-esteem was deeply hurt in his eyes. After that, he sent Secretary Kim a message. Even a perfect man like me hasn't made you happy? What exactly do you not like about me? Upon hearing this, Secretary Kim angrily replied, You never put yourself in other people's shoes. Selfish and controlling, with a touch of compulsive obsession, and you call yourself perfect, spending all day admiring your own appearance. Do you know how exhausting it is for me to see you every day? These words hit Jun like a slap in the face. After returning home, he couldn't sleep all night. The next day, Jun suddenly changed his attitude towards Secretary Kim. I agree to your resignation. This month, hand over your work and leave. Secretary Kim thought she would feel relieved, but somehow she felt a bit uncomfortable inside. After that, Jun started paying attention to the new secretary. Everything was assigned to her to handle. Feeling abandoned, Secretary Kim felt extremely uncomfortable. However, a controlling person like Jun couldn't easily let go like that. This is just a tightly bound loophole. That day, while Secretary Kim was having dinner with friends, the waiter suddenly brought out a survey sheet about satisfaction with the restaurant and asked them to fill it out. But the questions had nothing to do with the restaurant. Instead, the survey asked if she met someone she liked, where she would like to go with that person. At this point, Secretary Kim felt this tone was very familiar, but she didn't think much of it. That evening, Jun received the survey from the restaurant. From now on, he would start courting her. He asked a subordinate to call Secretary Kim to meet him outside. When Secretary Kim arrived, all the lights in the park suddenly lit up. Fireworks were alternating in the distant sky. Such a beautiful sight made Secretary Kim amazed. At this moment, Jun stepped forward. This moment made Kim Mi-so slightly moved, but only a little bit. To Kim Mi-so's suspicion, Jun admitted that he had deceived her to the date. Let's go, let's go to the amusement park. Isn't it closed already? Don't worry, I've rented out the whole place. They both rode the roller coaster together. Secretary Kim was terrified. Although Jun was also terrified, he always pretended to be calm. Then they played pirate ships together. Jun was not scared at all from start to finish. He completely didn't notice how terrified Secretary Kim was. When Secretary Kim's feet touched the ground, she was still unsteady. Jun wanted to take her to play more thrilling games. After a while, he realized something was wrong. Secretary Kim said she didn't like these kinds of games at all. She wanted to go on the carousel. Then Secretary Kim sat on the carousel with a very happy face. Because this was her childhood wish. After many failed pursuits, she finally saw the beautiful smile of the beauty. Jun couldn't help but smile. Then the two of them went to a high-end restaurant. This was the first time Jun had cut meat for someone since he was born. Secretary Kim wondered why this restaurant, which had always been very crowded, was empty today. Jun said it was because he used his superpowers and a lot of money to reserve the restaurant. But Secretary Kim still said she wasn't moved at all. Next, they admired the night view on yacht. Both of them felt a little cold. Secretary Kim took out a silk scarf. Jun quickly stopped her, which man would wear a silk scarf? 
Secretary Kim admitted she brought it for herself to wear. Usually in such situations, men will take off their coats and give them to the women they love. Jun was stunned, in this cold, he's still distinguishing between genders. Suddenly, fireworks burst in the distance. Kim Miso was surprised, thinking there was an event happening nearby. Jun chuckled, saying he hired someone to set off the fireworks. Secretary Kim couldn't hide the smile on her lips, she was indeed a little moved. Kim Miso said she was really happy to witness such a beautiful fireworks display. Seeing her so happy, Jun felt he had achieved his goal. Then he took off his coat and gave it to Secretary Kim to wear, they locked eyes without blinking. On the way back, Secretary Kim realized that what happened today seemed somewhat familiar. Wasn't that the dating preferences she wrote at the restaurant? Maybe this guy is doing everything according to what she wrote. Next, he will surely give her a teddy bear. Sure enough, Jun suddenly opened the trunk, took out a little teddy bear and handed it to Secretary Kim. Even though everything was planned with a purpose, Secretary Kim still happily accepted it. Just as she was about to turn and leave, Jun suddenly called her back. Wanting to fulfill the last wish on the list, giving her a kiss. Secretary Kim blushed suddenly, holding the teddy bear to block Jun's handsome face. The scene was a bit awkward, but Jun noticed the hesitation of the other party, which made him even more confident. However, what surprised him was that the next day, Secretary Kim went on a blind date. Upon receiving the news, Jun was extremely surprised. He couldn't understand why she would do that, but he wasn't too worried, it was just a blind date. Director Park said they would surely have a successful blind date. Jun asked why? Because Secretary Kim just wants to find a normal man to marry. Jun sneered, impossible. This girl has fallen under my curse. She can't like anyone else. Next, we could see how effective Jun's curse truly was. It was impressive. In terms of appearance, Secretary Kim's blind date was completely inferior to Jun. Then, the blind date venue for Secretary Kim was a small restaurant. Secretary Kim wore high heels, standing for a long time, her feet hurting, while the restaurant was very crowded. At this moment, Secretary Kim suddenly remembered yesterday when Jun had reserved the entire restaurant for them to have privacy. Completely contrasting with the stingy man in front of her, she accidentally picked up his piece of chicken, and he immediately asked her to return it. Secretary Kim was speechless. At the same time, Jun had foreseen everything, he said to Director Park, I took Secretary Kim to the amusement park, a luxurious restaurant, even a yacht. Everything was top-notch services. Currently, there's probably no ordinary man who can make her feel moved, and that's my wish for her. Secretary Kim and her blind date went for coffee. The man said there was something on her face and intimately wiped it off. This scene was captured by co-workers and shared in the company group. Jun was dumbfounded. He angrily asked if she wanted to resign, Dream on. On the other side, Secretary Kim and her blind date finished eating. As they stepped out, she noticed his tie wasn't tied properly. Out of professional habit, she immediately stepped forward to fix it for him. Suddenly, there was a scream behind Secretary Kim. She was frightened. The tie was so tightly tied that it made her blind date struggle to breathe. June angrily walked over, causing their date to fall apart. Secretary Kim carefully followed behind him. He angrily blamed her. Do you know how important the sports event? Why did you go on a blind date on such an important day? Jun wanted to scold the unfaithful woman in front of everyone, but he held his tongue and angrily left. At the sports event the next day, Jun demanded that Secretary Kim win first place. Only then could she highlight his leadership aura. The secretary couldn't help but feel discouraged. Isn't it just a sports event? Why take it so seriously? Seeing Secretary Kim gearing up, showing she was ready to win first place, changed his mind. Suddenly, Jun shouted in the office for Secretary Kim. She hurried in and saw her boss with a frightened face. Secretary Kim quickly cut the rope, then expressed her regret to him, saying she wouldn't let something similar happen again. June said someone about to resign like her had nothing to ensure her future with. Then the sports event began, and the company employees were divided into two teams, red and blue. Secretary Kim won first place in the solo competitions. June was extremely pleased, also proud of himself. Without my hard work nurturing her, how could Secretary Kim achieve such excellence? The three-legged race was about to start, and a young man ran up to Secretary Kim, chatting with her and handing her a bottle of water. Jun suppressed his dissatisfaction. When the game started, Secretary Kim squeezed her partner's waist tightly. This scene made Jun, sitting in the stands, feel like burning inside. They won first place effortlessly, embracing in celebration at the finish line while colleagues in the stands cheered them on. Jun, furious, chugged a bottle of water to cool off and made a declaration. Starting next year, the company will stop hosting sports events. As soon as he stepped down from the stands, Jun tripped over a step. Quickly call Secretary Kim to take care of me, she has no choice but to help me get home, he demanded. The guard tried to help, but the director stopped him. He knew what Jun wanted, it was evident he deliberately had Secretary Kim assist him home.
Secretary Kim quickly made an ice pack for Rang Jun's swollen ankle at home, she then heard the other party's vinegar lace complaints. The young man sensed he was dealing with someone promiscuous. Certain he might harm female colleagues, he chose to resign. Secretary Kim was speechless. Later, Jun wanted to see if the other party liked him. They locked eyes, hearts pounding. Feeling embarrassed, Secretary Kim quickly stood up and headed to the kitchen. Later, due to exhaustion, Jun fell asleep. In his dream, he saw himself being kidnapped as a child, his limbs tightly bound by ropes, leaving a psychological shadow. Thus, it left a deep-seated fear in him. In recent years, thanks to Secretary Kim's attentive care, Jun no longer struggled alone in life. The fear had significantly diminished. But since Secretary Kim mentioned her resignation, the nightmare began to resurface. In short, he had to do everything to keep Secretary Kim by his side. A few days later, Jun wanted to do something romantic to increase affection. So that evening, he arranged to meet Secretary Kim at the library. Suddenly, the lights went out, providing a perfect opportunity for intimacy. But the result was, oh dear, you scared me to death. In fact, Secretary Kim had done so deliberately to see if the person dared to provoke her. But the young man was surprisingly gentle, saying that Rang Jun's terrified expression was adorable. Jun quickly regained his composure, yes, that's not adorable, that's my charm, you know. It seems this guy is starting to flatter himself. Afterward, they walked out together. At a crossroad, they had a disagreement, Secretary Kim said the exit was on the right. But Jun insisted, it seems you're not familiar with the building's structure, the exit is straight ahead. Secretary Kim could only helplessly follow him, but Jun soon realized the harsh truth. In front of them was a wall. Secretary Kim mocked him without mercy. Although he was knowledgeable about the building's structure, I'm the one who comes here regularly, so trust me. After that, he immediately followed behind Secretary Kim, asking her if she had sprayed perfume or not. Secretary Kim flipped her hair, saying, this is the natural scent of my perfume. Jun chuckled, indeed, that's what I expect from a woman like you. Afterward, he shamelessly grabbed Secretary Kim's hand. As they neared the door, the power returned, and they let go. At this point, the security guard rushed to apologize for the power outage. Normally, Jun would immediately scold. But now he said, it's okay. On the way home, Secretary Kim accidentally bumped into a man. She quickly apologized to him, but the man suddenly sat down. Seeing Secretary Kim's bracelet slipping off, he helped her fasten it again, then smiled gently and walked away. Secretary Kim felt this man was truly considerate. Compared to the vice president, he was much more attentive. But what she couldn't expect was that this man was Sun Yun, Young Jun's older brother. Previously, Sun Yun studied abroad and only recently returned home. The next day, Jun received a message from his brother saying that he would come to visit because their relationship wasn't good. He didn't want Secretary Kim to meet his brother. He hastily chased Secretary Kim out. Unexpectedly, Sun Yun coincidentally met Secretary Kim. They recognized each other. Sun Yun felt it was fate, so he asked for Secretary Kim's phone number. He also saw her name on her employee ID. He must have seen her before. Cut to Jun returning home for lunch, his mother urged him to quickly get married. She even said that she found Secretary Kim very nice, but Sun Yun said he also found Secretary Kim very suitable for him. This made Jun very uncomfortable. After lunch, when the two were talking, the atmosphere began to tense, revealing past turmoil between them. So, their relationship wasn't good. Suddenly, Sun Yun grabbed Jun and punched him hard. If their mother hadn't cried and stopped them, they would have fought. Jun felt extremely bad. He went downstairs to Secretary Kim's place but didn't intend to go up. Just as he was about to leave, he spotted Secretary Kim approaching. She noticed a scar on Jun's lip and quickly asked him what happened. Seeing that Jun didn't want to talk, Secretary Kim decided to treat his wound. But inside the house was very messy. Jun showed his dislike for this area. Secretary Kim didn't want to say anything. She pulled him to sit down and carefully cleaned his wound. The scent from Secretary Kim's body made Jun's heart beat irregularly. After reacting, he quickly avoided her. Although Secretary Kim didn't know what had just happened, she knew her boss was not happy. So she decided to cook him a romantic dinner to lift his mood. Jun saw his teddy bear gift fall. He reached out to pick it up. Seeing this, Secretary Kim hurriedly ran to stop him, but she accidentally fell into Jun's arms. Secretary Kim stood up, wanting to leave, but Jun immediately hugged her tightly. Their eyes met, igniting a flame of passion, but they were just superior and subordinate, after all. The awkward moment passed, and Secretary Kim hurried to the kitchen. In less than 10 minutes, she cooked a hot instant noodle dinner. Although Jun claimed to dislike it, he still tried a piece with kimchi and found it surprisingly delicious. It wasn't a gourmet meal, but it was the best with kimchi. In an instant, he discarded his self-image. He began eating heartily. After dinner, it was time to say goodbye. Jun rarely thanked others. 
It seemed this dictatorial vice president could also be gentle at times. Back in Secretary Kim's room, she reminisced about what had just happened. It seems she's been moved. The next day, June drove to pick up Secretary Kim for work. He courteously opened the car door for her, complimenting her on her beauty today. Then he took out breakfast cooked by a top chef, telling her to eat properly every day. Faced with the sudden attention from her boss, Secretary Kim could only stiffly accept. But this was just the beginning. At the company, June politely invited her into the elevator, even standing so close to her to make sure she could see his handsome face. Seeing Secretary Kim's hand get cut, June immediately stood up to check. He almost took her to the emergency room, but the director caught him and quickly confessed. This made our vice president very embarrassed. He must have a very special way to confess. This is truly bothersome. He sought a new secretary's advice on the most romantic way to confess. Suddenly, Secretary Kim appeared, and Jun immediately changed the subject. What's the schedule for tomorrow's work? Eventually, he booked a restaurant. Jun happily invited Secretary Kim over, not knowing Sun Yun had manipulated everything. He claimed to be the author of Secretary Kim's favorite novel. He pledged to attend the library opening and arrange a special conference. Secretary Kim was unsure about their relationship with the vice president. And before she could understand, Jun scolded her. She angrily turned away. The next day, June took the initiative to talk to Secretary Kim, trying to make her happy. He agreed to her request to organize the conference, but Secretary Kim was still angry. No matter what, she didn't want to forgive him. Until a colleague came to gossip, then she realized Young Jun and Sun Yun were brothers. She remembered Jun had said they had never been harmonious. Before Secretary Kim could apologize, June approached her, sparing her self-blame. He regretted it and apologized for his excessive behavior yesterday. Their relationship improved after clearing up the misunderstanding. After resolving the misunderstanding, their relationship progressed better. June prepared for their first kiss, but memories of being kidnapped as a child suddenly surfaced in his mind. The next second, he did something extremely embarrassing. Secretary Kim was suddenly pushed away, and the romantic atmosphere disappeared instantly. Secretary Kim's expression seemed to say, Are you kidding me? Then she frantically dug into June's actions. She requested a day off to calm herself down. June initially wanted to keep her, but seeing Secretary Kim's fierce gaze, he immediately let go. That evening, June wanted to send a message to explain, but hesitated for half a day. Finally, he only sent a short apology. Secretary Kim completely ignored it, making him extremely sad. The next day, the butler came to inform Secretary Kim to come. June immediately got up to leave, but in front of him was Secretary Yang. On the other side, Secretary Kim was resting. The scene from yesterday suddenly came back, and she felt ashamed to the point of madness. She called her friends to hang out, but they were all busy leaving her alone to sit in the park and eat ice cream. At this point, June was also not in the mood to work, deciding to take a day off. Then, he went to find Secretary Kim. Secretary Kim said she wasn't available. But in the midst of her aimless wandering, she had betrayed herself. June took out a list, and side was today's schedule. First, they would dine at a fancy restaurant and listen to symphony music. Then, they would enjoy the scenery on yacht, from the riverside to the airport by helicopter. Finally to Japan by private jet, eat sushi at a famous restaurant, and then return home. Secretary Kim immediately cut him off. She just wanted a normal vacation. June put away his schedule board, agreeing to Secretary Kim's request. Then Secretary Kim took him to the bus stop. This was June's first time going to the bus stop. Because his legs were unsteady, he made a lot of jokes. Then they ate at a long-standing street food stall. Even though the food wasn't hygienic, he still insisted believing that eating dirty meant living long. Then they went to a claw machine, where Secretary Kim repeatedly failed. He then said he would show her how to be a master at grabbing bears. First, move the claw to the top of the bear, then rotate the handle a few times. Finally, just press the button to get the bear. What? Secretary Kim burst out laughing, but June didn't give up. He tried once, twice, thrice, then 20 times. June's spirit collapsed, and he took out his wallet. How much is this machine? I'll buy it. Seeing this, Secretary Kim pulled him away. Back at the doorstep, Jun still thought about that claw machine. But today's fun outing had helped the two reconcile. The next day, Secretary Kim received a phone call. It was the man she had gone on a blind date with. Her request for him to investigate the kidnapped boy from her childhood had produced results. The boy kidnapped with her back then was the son of the company president. Secretary Kim remembered seeing a scar on Jun's leg from being tied up. Moreover, Jun also suffered from fear. The answer was immediately clear. Turns out June was the boy she had been searching for all along. When she saw June, her eyes overflowed with love. Fate is truly miraculous. The person she had sought for years had always been beside her. When talking to June, Secretary Kim choked up with tears of emotion. June felt that she was acting a bit strange today. 
She was treating him differently than usual. Was it because he had performed too well yesterday, making her touched? He went to the claw machine again last night. He thought that if he could grab a bear and give it to Secretary Kim, then she would surely be even more moved. So he sneaked off to fold the bear. After hours of trying, he still couldn't fold a single bear. He was even teased by two elementary school students as a loser, not working but folding bears instead. Receiving the teddy bear, Secretary Kim was so moved, she burst into tears. When Secretary Kim received the teddy bear, she was so moved that she burst into tears. June was also very satisfied. But not long after, when Secretary Kim was talking to a colleague, the colleague told Secretary Kim, June's brother had shared on his blog about being kidnapped as a child and crying. Secretary Kim's mood turned complex. She opened that post, which clearly stated the time and place of the incident. Only someone who had experienced it would know this. In an instant, her feelings for June were no longer as intense as before. So, she sought June out to clarify this matter. Upon hearing this, June's smile immediately vanished. He admitted his brother's kidnapping, shedding tears. Seeing Secretary Kim's emotional gaze left him deeply disappointed. Made him feel extremely disappointed. Sung Yun also arrived at the company. Secretary Kim met him. She discovered that his personality and June's were completely different. Seeing this respected man always speak ill of his younger brother. In his memories, his younger brother was a terrible person. When he was young, he was always compared to his younger brother. He even led him to the slums, indirectly causing him to be kidnapped. Hearing this, Secretary Kim found it hard to believe, because June, despite his arrogance, was not a bad person. Why would Sun Yun say such things? That evening, Secretary Kim went to June's house to find answers. While rearranging files, she discovered a big secret. Nine years ago, besides her, there was another applicant for the secretary position. This person surpassed her in every way. Why did June choose her? June suddenly appeared. She voiced her doubts. She asked June if he had known her for a long time. But Rang Jun just gently looked at her. Memories from nine years ago resurfaced. After escaping, the two children had promised to meet again someday. Later, the boy became a powerful CEO. One day, he saw the girl who had applied for a job at his company. From the first glance, he recognized her. He came to sit next to her. What's your name? Ah, my name is Kim Miso. Do you know who I am? The girl hurriedly nodded. I know. You're the chairman's son. June felt a bit disappointed that she didn't recognize him. After that, he eliminated other highly educated candidates and selected a Kim Miso. Because her family went bankrupt, she had to start working right after high school to support them. That's how Kim Miso became June's personal secretary. But due to her lack of skills, Secretary Kim kept making mistakes. June reprimanded her. Is your ability only this much? I only sleep two to three hours every day. I always try to improve myself, but you scold me every day. Do you think you're that good? Have you never made a mistake since you were born? Yes, you're despicable. But upon returning to her office, she cried even harder, not out of anger, but from regretting saying she didn't want to work anymore. The thought of how her sister's tuition fees would be paid filled her with growing regret, but then she suddenly received a text from June. The employee who dared to scold you. You're good, huh? Come back to work for me tomorrow. Early the next morning, she began to adjust her tie. June opened the door and she immediately apologized. Seeing her like this, June suddenly felt heartbroken. Facing Secretary Kim's question, June just said because I like you, got it? Actually, June felt very uncomfortable and he knew exactly what happened back then more than anyone else. Sung Yun began to frequently meet with Secretary Kim. Today, as they reached the restaurant's door, June suddenly appeared, using work as an excuse to take Secretary Kim away. Then, he warned Sung Yun not to meet Secretary Kim again. But Sung Yun said that he and Secretary Kim were meant to be together. In the car, June asked the two of them what they were doing. Secretary Kim explained because Sung Yun had forgotten some things from his childhood. She wanted to help him remember. June suggested they shouldn't meet again in the future, but Secretary Kim disagreed. He just sighed. When Secretary Kim and Sung Yun revisited the kidnapping site, they couldn't remember a thing. Then they went to a restaurant. Secretary Kim gave Sung Yun a diary he had written himself years ago, hoping to help him remember everything. At this point, she received a call from June, saying the company had an urgent matter and she should return quickly. Seeing Secretary Kim and Sun Jun together, Jun immediately became jealous. The two brothers began to argue. Secretary Kim told Sun Yun to go back first. Why did she address him so intimately? Is there a problem? Jun angrily said he was hungry, so she should make him instant noodles. Secretary Kim ignored him and went straight home afterwards. Jun was truly panicked, fearing that his woman would be taken away by his brother. So he lowered his pride and confessed his feelings to Secretary Kim. He's both smart and handsome, not to mention extremely wealthy. But now he doesn't want to live a single life anymore, he wants her by his side. 
Secretary Kim was moved upon hearing Jun's confession, and Jun spoke again, These are all sincere words, let's give them a chance. Secretary Kim was deeply moved, but then she rejected him. Jun shouted loudly when will she finally accept his confession. The next day, Secretary Kim and her colleagues went out to survey rural areas. While they were having fun, Jun suddenly appeared, surprising everyone. Secretary Kim asked why he was here. He replied that he came because Secretary Yang wanted to, so he reluctantly followed. Right, what are you all planning to eat? They originally planned to drink in barbecue, but now, who would dare to? They could only pretend to be excited. They prepared to return and devote themselves to work. Upon returning, everyone seemed unhappy. At this point, Jun argued with Secretary Kim. He was very upset about being rejected by her. Do you know why I'm here? Isn't it because Secretary Yang wanted to come? No, I'm here because I want to be in your thoughts all the time. Huh? Secretary Kim felt uncomfortable. Jun said again that the purpose of this trip was to increase their feelings for each other. After this team building trip, the two of them will become lovers. Next is the team activity time. Jun said whoever finds the hidden silk scarf on the mountain will be rewarded with a MacBook. While everyone was still preparing, GWI Nam ran off. Jun and Secretary Kim finally had their own space. But at this moment, Sung Yan called Secretary Kim. Jun immediately grabbed the phone. Sung Yan asked why he was holding Secretary Kim's phone. Oh, Secretary Kim is showering, I also need to shower, goodbye. Hearing this, Secretary Kim angrily turned away. Suddenly it started raining, Secretary Kim was about to get soaked. Jun suddenly appeared from behind and used his coat to cover her. They shared a romantic glance in the pouring rain. They quickly forgot the recent unpleasantness. When they saw a spider in the hut, Secretary Kim recoiled in disgust. Jun immediately handed her a piece of chocolate. Secretary Kim instantly remembered her childhood. Back then, her little brother also gave her a piece of chocolate. Could it all just be a coincidence? Secretary Kim asked Rang Jun again, but he remained silent. Returning, they faced immediate questioning. They haven't been seen all day. Where have you been? Other colleagues were surprised too. Everyone turned to look at them. Secretary Kim and Jun were tense. Have you too? Gone to eat grilled beef chunks? Huh, you're scaring me to death. After turning off the lights and going to bed, Secretary Kim received a message from Jun. Good night, I allow you to dream about me. Secretary Kim smiled from under the blanket, then immediately replied. Thank you for your permission. Young Jun smiled. Early the next morning, Jun returned to the company. Secretary Kim sent a message asking if he wanted to have dinner together tonight. The concern in her words made Jun smile. Then Jun went to the supermarket with Director Park. Director Park thought they were being invited to a life or death mission to find good food. A few premium Tetra Pak boxes. These sausages are great for grilling over charcoal. We need to buy potatoes and sweet potatoes. Waiting for Director Park to pack all the groceries in the trunk, as soon as they returned, Jun closed the car door. Thank you for helping me choose groceries today. See you at the company tomorrow. Here, Secretary Kim is thinking about tonight's date. Just dressing simple is enough. Anyway, it's not a special day. So she starts applying makeup and a little cream, a bit of lipstick, mascara, and wearing the necklace Jun gave her, putting on the new dress she never wore before. Really beautiful. Arriving, Jun is grilling meat. Seeing Secretary Kim so beautifully moved him deeply, he immediately excelled. Wanted to show off his skills to her, the result was that the meat got burned. Secretary Kim quickly consoled him. It's okay, we can grill a fresh piece of meat again. But we're out of meat now, Secretary Kim looked down. It turns out he had burned a whole big box of meat before. I can't rely on him, it seems. Turns out there are things I don't understand well. Is he really special? Ha, huh, special in his head. So they finally had to order takeout. They ate pizza together. June swiftly helped Secretary Kim wipe her mouth, causing her heart rate to soar. June involuntarily heard someone coming forward. Secretary Kim also closed her eyes, but suddenly June remembered being kidnapped. Just like before, the good atmosphere was ruined. At this point, angry glares approached. June quickly got up. Secretary Kim also awkwardly bid farewell and then left. At this moment, Director Park realized he had ruined someone else's good work. Director Park was like a maid who had made a mistake. Immediately kneeling before Jun, he said, Your Highness, I deserve to die. At this point, Jun wanted to crush the man in front of him. A few days later, Sung Yun scheduled another outing with Secretary Kim. Suddenly, Sung Yun grabbed Secretary Kim's hand and confessed his feelings. This scene was seen by Jun, who became furious and walked away. Secretary Kim rushed after Jun to clarify the misunderstanding. No need to explain, I don't want to hear it, but if we don't explain, the distance between us will only grow wider, that makes me scared. Jun asked why she was scared. Secretary Kim said, because I like you, after saying that, she left. 
Jinan then pulled her back into his embrace, but just as he was about to successfully kiss her, he hesitated. Letting Secretary Kim go, she seemed a little confused but didn't dwell on it. Today, I must lose my first kiss, said Jun determinately. After confirming their relationship, both of them were very happy. While waiting at a red light, Jun held Secretary Kim's hand and shouted loudly, At last, you've fallen for me, ha ha. As a result, he was mistaken by passersby to be mentally unstable. Secretary Kim was extremely embarrassed. After taking her home, Jun expressed his desire to quickly marry Secretary Kim. Secretary Kim laughed, Oh my, we've only been dating for less than an hour, marriage already? We still need to consider your attitude. Secretary Kim smiled and left, leading Jun to drive home. On the way back, he felt unsettled. He instantly thought of Secretary Kim's. So he went to Secretary Kim's house and called her down. Why did you come back right after leaving? Are you worried you'll miss me and lose sleep all night? Secretary Kim was helpless, unable to say anything, and Jun said, I'm afraid you'll miss me all night and won't be able to sleep, so I came here. Secretary Kim laughed. Then the two stood and talked for a while. After Jun hugged her, they reluctantly parted ways, and Secretary Kim was very happy. She ran to the window, smiling as she watched him leave. Upon returning home, Jun found himself always wearing a smile. Even when he tried to use his hand to pull it down, it would bounce back up. So, they secretly dated in the company, always mindful of their roles when speaking to each other. Shall we have lunch together today? I don't have any plans for lunch today, so I can go. It's our first meal together since we became lovers. I want to be a little special. Let's go to places we haven't been before. Yes, I'll immediately make a list of new places to go. Well, prepare a cake to commemorate this special day. Okay, I'll order the cake at your favorite restaurant. At this point, they both realized that something was wrong, not right. This wasn't how two people in love talked. Even at the restaurant, they maintained the same state to talk to each other. At this point, they ran into Rimaida, the chef next door, who didn't think much, asking if they were satisfied with the food. Then they joked around, and Jun's girlfriend listened to him obediently. Anyone who didn't know would think she was his secretary. The two didn't say a word. After returning to the company, Jun decided not to rely on Secretary Kim anymore, wanting to print documents himself, make tea himself, and get light snacks himself. This made all the employees worry and speculate. Is the vice president doing these things himself because he's unsatisfied with us? Later, Secretary Kim went into the office. Jun said this was the first time in his life he made tea with his own hands. She should try it. Secretary Kim wasn't good at refusing, but after just one sip, she burned her tongue. This made Jun worried. Colleagues standing outside the door witnessing the scene were all surprised. Afterward, he was summoned by the vice president, who said Jun wanted to publicly acknowledge his relationship with Secretary Kim, but thinking that everyone wasn't ready yet, they could only come up with a lame excuse. They lied that he and Secretary Kim had just discussed work together. Secretary Kim also daringly pretended to be naive to escape, to avoid confusion between love and work. Secretary Kim demanded that Jun not show affection in public. Those harsh words hurt Jun's heart. But just as they started dating, after a day of pretending to be strangers, Jun showed up unexpectedly at Secretary Kim's door. He brought her a portion of grilled pork skin that she loved. She was extremely happy, feeling that Jun was very thoughtful. One sentence I miss you a lot made Jun extremely happy, completely forgetting the unpleasant words during the day. Suddenly, Secretary Kim's two older sisters unexpectedly visited, and she immediately locked Jun in the closet and ran to open the door. Secretary Kim's sisters hated Jun, saying their younger sister was only able to eat late because of him. They said Jun was indeed a cruel person, always bullying the staff, and told their younger sister to quit her job quickly. Jun, inside the closet, felt both angry and helpless until the two sisters left, then he could complain to Secretary Kim. Meanwhile, Sun Yun still refused to give up on Secretary Kim, always using the past to make appointments with someone else's daughter, and spreading rumors about Jun. In response to this, Secretary Kim clearly stated her position, she always believed in Jun and did not accept Sun Yun's confession. At this point, Jun suddenly appeared, he had heard Secretary Kim's words, his heart blooming with joy. He then took Secretary Kim away, on the way not saying any sweet words, making their relationship even better. A few days later, Secretary Kim came to see Jun's mother without prior notice. According to the storyline of the drama, a suitcase will appear next, but does Secretary Kim really have this intention? Of course not, she just wants to ask why Jun and his brother always disagree like that. When they were little, something must have happened, but Jun's mother obviously didn't want to talk about it. As Secretary Kim was about to leave, suddenly two photos on the table caught her attention, Sun Yun's confession was also there. Secretary Kim asked him which photo was him, Sun Yun immediately pointed to the less handsome child. Secretary Kim was shocked, 
because she remembered clearly, the Appa she knew when she was young was the one who was by her side. In other words, the one who protected her back then was Jun, not Sun Yun in front of her. There must be something painful, so everyone deliberately concealed this matter. Secretary Kim no longer cares about this, she just wants peace with Jun. Next, Jun often hears the term Appa, this kind of address makes him laugh uncontrollably, but happiness is often short-lived. Secretary Kim rejects all of his requests, he gets angry to the point of banging the table. In the evening, the two of them agreed to meet at Jun's house, seeing the scars on Jun's ankles. Secretary Kim immediately burst into tears, at this moment she just wants to give Jun more love. So, in a moment of vulnerability, she expresses her love for Jun, in return, someone else would be embarrassed to death. But Jun is extremely delighted. The next day is the weekend, Secretary Kim and her two sisters go to Jesus Island. Remembering Secretary Kim couldn't stand it, Jun hurried here. He has two main purposes, first is to meet Secretary Kim, second is to win the hearts of her two sisters, making them feel reassured to give Secretary Kim to him. So, he directly said he had prepared a seaside apartment. Unexpectedly, the eldest sister immediately refused. She also pointed out their differing status. In the future, her sister would be at a disadvantage marrying into his family. Jun was embarrassed, wanting to invite everyone to dinner, but the high-end restaurant he booked didn't suit the eldest sister's taste. With no other choice, he had to follow her lead. Having dinner at a small restaurant by the beach, the second sister was extremely cheerful, saying she was already full. But her hand kept reaching for the food, seeing Jun's embarrassed face. Elder sister said eating buffet should be done like this. You not understanding this is understandable. We are basically not on the same level. Jun immediately devoured the food, eating so much that his pants almost burst, continuously stuffing food into his mouth, proving that the richer people eat more. After eating to their heart's content, they went clam digging by the beach, shedding their handsome outfits. Jun put on fisherman clothes. He dug up more than half a bucket of clams, showing how hard he tried. The second elder sister's attitude towards him changed. Although the eldest sister said she didn't like him, she had accepted Jun in her heart. Then she helped him with his indigestion from overreading, and they all happily ate together. At that moment, the eldest sister recounted their parents' love story from their impoverished days, but their mother always supported their father's rock and roll career, until she passed away from a serious illness. Their father began traveling around the world, and Kim's secretary had felt neglected since childhood. So, her sisters always hoped that she could have a happy family in the future. Hearing this, Jun felt extremely sorry for Kim's secretary, promising to protect her well in the future. But shortly after, at a party, Kim's secretary suddenly remembered her childhood memories. The kidnapper also wore red high heels. The artist evoked Kim's secretary's painful memories. Moreover, Sung Yen also remembered something here, too. After being continuously questioned, Kim's secretary suddenly fainted, and in her dream, she saw the face of the woman. Back then, she was toyed with by a despicable man. So, she began to seek revenge on society, kidnapping children of unknown backgrounds, making them obediently pretend to be her children. Jun always stood by to protect Kim's secretary, so that she wouldn't be harmed. He advised the woman to stop these crazy actions. Finally, the woman was apprehended, but she still didn't release the two children. Then she chose to exit the earth. Jun witnessed this scene firsthand. Terrified, he didn't want Kim's secretary to see this. He told her to close her eyes and then led her away. However, the kidnapper's suicide became a psychological shadow for Jun. So, from a young age, he struggled to face unfamiliar women and had a great fear of ropes. But Jun never mentioned what happened in the past. Because at that time, Sung Yun deliberately abandoned him. Later, the overwhelming guilt made him forget this memory. So, in Sung Yun's subconscious, he always thought he was the victim, he always used this to bully Jun. Always putting on a pitiful innocent face. Hearing that Kim's secretary fainted, Jun grabbed Sung Yun by the collar, asking if he wanted to inquire about his childhood again. At this point, Sung Yun remembered everything, and Jun didn't know how to explain. In fact, he was still in pain. Among the three, only he remembered everything. But he didn't want others to experience the pain. Jun silently endured everything. Kim's secretary cried when she woke up. It's hard to imagine how Jun survived over the years. She felt grateful and compassionate towards him. At the same time, Sung Yan walked the streets in a daze, old memories flooding back, once again plunging him into deep guilt. Mother came to comfort him, but he started blaming himself and his family. After learning the truth, the mother immediately scolded. She always thought both brothers had lost their memories. So, she lied based on the memories of the older brother. Hoping Jun wouldn't blame his brother. She didn't expect Jun remembered everything. Furthermore, he collaborated with the drama troupe for 20 years. But fortunately, he always had Kim's secretary by his side. At this point, Jun no longer felt pain. Instead, he was always afraid that Kim's secretary would faint again, seeing her refuse to rest at the inn. 
he organized a trip to the healthcare center for all the office staff. During that time, he continuously texted to inquire. Kim's secretary was extremely happy. The loving response made Jun very satisfied. A female colleague immediately objected. The vice president really didn't let others enjoy, and at this point, she even wanted her to arrange work. Kim's secretary felt helpless and remained silent. Her angry expression seemed to want to accuse Jun. Returning to the office, Jun dismissed everyone early. This had never happened before. But now, Jun just wanted to be alone with Kim's secretary. After everyone left, Jun immediately took Kim's secretary to the amusement park. The carousel was beautifully built. The fountain was even more beautiful. At this point, Jun said this place used to be Kim's secretary's home. Kim's secretary was very happy, marveling at Jun's kindness while reminiscing about her childhood. Finally, Jun also mentioned the past. Thanks to Kim's secretary, he stepped out of the shadows of childhood. They talked for a long time, Jun reluctant to leave. He hinted at wanting to spend the night with Kim's secretary. He verbally said it was to prevent her from having nightmares. But in reality, he wanted to elevate their relationship. But Kim's secretary wasn't ready yet, so she refused Jun to come home, feeling a bit sad. Kim's secretary thought of her dream of spending the night together. As soon as she feared that Jun would appear again, with her nightwear and luggage in tow, indicating that he would stay here tonight. Kim's secretary didn't want them to live together so soon, but Jun said he wouldn't do anything. At most, consider it as a trial cohabitation, without waiting for Kim's secretary's consent, he stepped inside. Completely disregarding himself as an outsider, he prepared to wash up and sleep. Kim's secretary lay down on the bed, and Jun immediately lay down beside her, even using his hand as a pillow for her. Kim's secretary couldn't sleep and opted to watch TV before bed. Unexpectedly, the conditions in her house weren't bad, and Jun planned to watch a movie with her. But the TV images were really unsuitable for children, making both of them blush. Finally, they could only go upstairs to drink wine. There were no wine openers in Kim's secretary's house, so she told Jun to take off his coat. Then she poured the wine and repeatedly hit the wall. Don't do that, that red wine bottle costs 20 million. Kim's secretary hurriedly put it back in its place. However, they kept talking for a while. Downstairs, the voice of an aunt could be heard. Although Jun's luxurious car was parked in the designated spot, the auntie kept complaining. Living in a single room and yet able to afford such an expensive car, if not rented, it must be stolen. It can be seen that this auntie loves to compare, and Jun was helpless and didn't say anything. Kim's secretary also hurriedly left, saying they should go to Jun's room. So both of them moved to live in Jun's villa. The guest bedroom was as big as Kim's secretary's house, and neither of them could sleep. Jun decisively went to the guest bedroom and lay down beside Kim's secretary. Seeing the tense atmosphere, Jun said, let me sing you a song, sleep now, sleep now, if you don't sleep, I'll hit you. I hit very hard so you better sleep. Unexpectedly, Kim's secretary fell asleep to this terrible singing. The next day, both of them woke up early, and Kim's secretary made a love omelette. Although the taste wasn't outstanding, in Jun's eyes, this was the best breakfast ever. It can be seen that no one is normal when in love. At the company, they still talked about love, ate together. They even went shopping together. Jun was in a very good mood, enjoying the sweetness of love until his parents appeared, an apology that reminded him of many bad memories. When he was young, he was abandoned by his older brother, then cornered by a perverted woman, and even feigned amnesia. Just to make his parents feel better, a child understanding such things really hurts others. Not only did his parents cry red-eyed, but Kim's secretary outside the door also burst into tears. Meanwhile, Sung Yan was also preparing to go abroad. He really didn't know how to face his younger brother. At this moment, Jun stepped forward, saying that family shouldn't be more calculating. What he should do is not to run away but to face everything in the past. This is the first time the two brothers have talked to each other. Sung Yen changed his mind and decided to stay. Kim's secretary stayed by Jun's side. When love burns passionately, neither of them can control themselves. But the phone kept ringing, disturbing their intimate moment. Waiting for Jun to want to continue. Kim's secretary had already fallen asleep again, helpless Jun could only hug her back to bed, then gave her a goodnight kiss. A few days later, Jun had to go on a business trip. He frantically sent messages to Kim's secretary, just a few days apart and they already missed each other terribly. Finally, they met again, but Jun saw Kim's secretary joking with other men. This scene truly irritated Jun. He didn't think much, directly accusing Kim's secretary. He had flown 12 hours just to see her, yet she was joking with other men. Seeing him jealous, Kim's secretary laughed even louder, prompting Jun to immediately kiss her. Especially since the new employee found out Kim's secretary was about to marry the president. She promised to keep it a secret for Kim's secretary, realizing the relationship couldn't be hidden anymore. Jun thought they should openly date, but Kim's secretary firmly disagreed. 
Because after all, June was the president of the company, and him loving his secretary would definitely attract media attention. That day, Kim's father was injured and had to be hospitalized. June had intended to visit him, but Kim's secretary worried her father wouldn't accept the truth, repeatedly rejecting June's good intentions. During these days, Kim's secretary was busy taking care of her father. Without her, June didn't want to eat. His older sister came to take care of their father so that his younger sister could go on a date with June. June eagerly invited Kim's secretary to his house in the evening. Kim's secretary blurted out, You seem too impatient about that. It seems June's feelings have been discovered. Your good friend laughed at you for being too eager to sleep with someone else's daughter. I'm afraid Kim's secretary will lose interest in you. This statement made June extremely anxious. Although he felt he was perfect. In front of Kim's secretary, he felt like a child. Basically not knowing how to love in a way that wouldn't make Kim's secretary bored. June tried to keep his distance from her, and he didn't invite Kim's secretary to his house anymore. Kim's secretary was completely moved by his attention. Unexpectedly, that evening Kim's secretary came to find him on her own. She said she understood his feelings and tonight she didn't want to go home. Finally, June's wish came true. The two lovers passionately seems inappropriate for children to watch. Not long after, their relationship was discovered by Kim's secretary's father. Facing his future father-in-law, June felt extremely tense. What troubled him most was his future father-in-law's refusal to accept his daughter marrying a wealthy man. The threatening tone left June speechless. But after he politely left, Kim's secretary's father's attitude immediately did a 180-degree turn. Ah, this future son-in-law made the father very pleased. Wasn't he against it just now? What a fool, agreeing so easily is like looking down on his daughter. Kim's secretary breathed a sigh of relief, then the two men sat down to talk seriously. The father-in-law deliberately made June feel tense, seeing that June truly loved his daughter. He immediately approved of their relationship. A few days later, the love between June and Kim's secretary grew stronger. Occasionally, June would visit Kim's secretary's house, completely oblivious to the fact that someone else was in bed. Just as they were about to ignite the flames of love, Kim's secretary's father loudly interrupted, threatening to almost make June's tiny heart leap out of his chest. Word has it that June wants to marry his daughter. The father-in-law swiftly took his son-in-law for drinks. Cheap soju made June's throat uncomfortable, but he dared not complain. He held up the glass, then drank it all in one gulp. An hour later, both were so drunk that their steps were staggering, even beginning to call each other brothers. At that moment, June's parents also discovered their relationship. June's mother had long wanted Kim's secretary to become her daughter-in-law. Finally, everything went as her wish, and she quickly called her son to confirm the truth. Seeing everyone supporting this love, June promptly proposed to Kim's secretary. In the evening, the secretary Kim, beautifully made up, arrived at his house, greeted by a path lit with candles. Though slightly surprised, secretary Kim entered, enchanted by the innocent signs and the exquisite piano music. With June's sincere confession, secretary Kim was deeply moved to tears. The proposal went smoothly. The next day, both families met. June's family lived in a luxurious mansion, with towering bodyguards. Kim's father was so intimidated he dared not even breathe loudly, and her older sister was equally nervous, abandoning her previous arrogance. June greeted them with more politeness, and eventually, it was time for dinner, with steak served. People like them had never eaten such things before, but to save face for his daughter. Kim's father engaged in pleasant conversation with June's parents. Seeing her father's cautious demeanor, Secretary Kim felt uneasy. So when June's parents said, we'll prepare the best engagement ceremony for you, she directly refused. She loved June not for his wealth, she just wanted a normal wedding. Hearing this, both sets of parents were delighted, deciding to quickly organize the wedding for them. On the wedding day, although June assured Secretary Kim not to worry, he himself was as nervous as a cat on a hot tin roof. Oh dear, it seems you're the one stressed out. What did you say? You handle contracts worth tens of billions without stress. But what's with the nerves now? Secretary Kim can't stand it anymore, she hurriedly told him to take a few pills to calm down. At this point, June's rumored first girlfriend also appeared. She was truly furious that June had fallen for Secretary Kim. She deliberately wore a white dress to steal everyone's attention. Still, before Secretary Kim could even arrive, someone accidentally spilled a drink on her. Well, that stole the spotlight, didn't it? The wedding began with the bride and groom's chaotic entrance. Those present at the wedding kept offering their blessings to the couple. In their eyes, there was admiration aplenty. Finally, the two of them could hold hands and walk through life together. Alright, that's the end of the movie. Please take 3 seconds to subscribe to our channel to support us. Thank you for watching our channel. See you all in the next movie.